Welcome back out into the Willamette National Forest. I'm Tobin. There goes Athena and Luna. Luna will be chasing rocks throughout the video. I have a stash right here next to me. And Athena, the black one, will be chasing Luna. Athena just turned nine months old. Luna is our four-year-old, both German Shepherds. The wife and daughter over here to my right, your left, huddled around a fire out here just for a day trip, doing a little hiking, uh, some target practice. You'll see the 360 of my surroundings in the B-roll. Bacaro or Bacaro is how you'd pronounce this one. So this fragrance was going to be my second collaboration with Pete Hendricks. This is not technically a collaboration with Pete. Going back the last few months, I've been helping Pete select fragrances. We are working on my second collaboration. I just got busy with work and stuff like that. Pete had reached out to me not too long ago, a few months ago now, uh, talking about these next upcoming four releases, beginning with this one. He's probably sent me close to a hundred different little vials of fragrances, and we've been just working on different ones to come up with. When he sent me the artwork for this one, kind of my you know task is my, my role um, with Pete's releases, the Tube 2.0 pre-shave from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, my go-to pre-shave, has been to help Pete select fragrances that I think the community as a whole can't please everyone all the time, right? But you can please most of the people most of the time. It's kind of my thinking. Did I say that right? And the way I've been doing that is by one, looking for fragrances that speak to me personally. And then the criteria being a fragrance for the most part, not always, but I can get a nine or a 10 out of Alexis, my wife, and our 16 year old daughter, Emily. Emily gives us a nine, Alexis gives it a 10. I would give it a 10. That is the exact reason um, why it was going to be my next collaboration with Pete. Some of the artwork I was working on, I've just decided months ago to go a different route with my next collaboration with Pete. So this is a clone and inspired by fragrance of Parfum de Marly's Haltain. I brought a bunch of stuff with me out here into the woods today. The one thing I forgot to do was bring my shave bowls. Luckily, I did bring the dog's water bowl. So with the help of my beautiful bread, I cleaned it out and I have some water in it right now. I have a dry Umo ST2 in a Umo handle. Look for my full review of this in my brush review series very soon. I wanted to use it in this video because I hadn't used it in a shave video yet. Um, and I thought it went really well with the label. Hi girls, let me throw one more rock. So we'll see what kind of a lather I get going here. At first, it should work out overall. I did put some water in it. Other than that, uh, the brush is dry. I know some of you are probably wondering what my thoughts are now that I've been using this brush for close to a month. I still prefer the Umo ST1. I really do. And I'll talk more about this brush in a future video. But if you own the ST1 and you don't have money to burn, I'd say just hold on to your money uh, and keep your Umo ST1. And if you're looking at buying either the ST1 or the ST2 for the price and what Pete Hendricks has them for on his website and what you can even get them for elsewhere, like at Umo, I really think that you're better off with just getting the ST1. But I hope to have my full review of, of that somewhere between now and the, the Black Friday weekend next weekend. Thanksgiving is coming. Let's talk about real quick my overview of this fragrance. Fresh aromatic opening. As we come into the middle, you get this luxurious saffron and praline that is sweet, rich, lightly spicy from that saffron. Athena, Athena loves to chase Luna. They would normally play, um, you know, like dogs do, but when Luna is out and about, all she cares about is chasing a rock, a stick, or a tennis ball. 
I'm gonna hit that on the face. I'll probably need to add some water. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put a blade in my razor. So while I continue, I should tell you about this fragrance. I want my notes. The Athena from Lambda Razors. Starting to sprinkle now. So the the the, the middle of this fragrance, and with this fragrance is, is really cool because this is one of those fragrances that you can really witness all four stages of the dry down from the top to the middle to the base to the fourth and final stage, the dry down, which is the fragrance that you will wear all day long. And um, if you have a keen nose at all, you will definitely notice all four stages of this fragrance. Beginning with that fresh aromatic opening, working your way down into this luxurious, rich, slightly sweet uh, middle, and then down into the base where we have the uh, oud and the cedar. Handles in my pocket. And once you get down into there, you run into this deep, resinous, earthy, just beautiful fragrance. The sweetness carries along with it throughout the entire thing. So in this, I have a first use that I just loaded. If I can pick it back up. Gillette Permasharp. Love this razor. I really, really do. Hello. Next rock, Dad. Where I'm standing, you'll see in the B-roll, uh, during the summer when the lake is full. This is a flood control lake. It was devastated by wildfires in the summer of 2020 during the, the COVID pandemic. Where I'm standing right now would be under about five to eight feet of water. Um, and right there, what you see is the river. That's Blue River. That's why it's Blue River Reservoir. And uh, when the rain season comes, it starts filling up to control water downstream into the McKinsey, which if you're familiar with my content, you've seen before. All right, let's get to building this lather. Actually, let's add a little bit of water. Wet the face. Oh, that's brisk. Full disclosure, this was sent to me for review. I did not pay for it. And before I'm done, I will share with you guys the one and only negative um, with this fragrance. In the top, you have clary sage, lavender, and bergamot. And if you're familiar with my content, you know that two of my favorite notes that always grab my attention is clary sage, sage in general. You just say the word sage and I'm there, and lavender. The clary sage is distinct, herbaceous, slightly sweet, fresh, clean, earthy tones. When I think of clary sage, this is the clary sage that I think of. I don't have a mirror with me today, just using the phone screen. Did I say I have you set up on the tripod? I do. Does not, doesn't have any backbone. It is super soft, slight scrub, not much, but it is a very soft fiber. To the point that the people like who don't like Badger because it's so soft with no backbone, you you won't like this one. I think the ST1 is like the perfect like Goldilocks fiber, synthetic fiber. And that this one just went, I hate using this word, too floppy and not enough backbone. I don't mind softness, it's super soft, but it is very floppy. One of the, no, I think it's fair to say this is the, this is fair to say, this is the floppiest synthetic I have ever used. After the clary sage, you have the lavender. This is a beautiful lavender, slightly woody, herbal, a fresh lavendery floral. It's not a floral fragrance. It's not floral, but that, that lavender floral. And this is all, you know, interwoven an orchestra of everything playing together the bergamot is bright and slightly tart when i asked my wife to give me some descriptors for the top of this fragrance and the fragrance overall some descriptors that she used was elegant green warm citrus yes 
That's what my wife said. Beautiful lather, lather, beautiful lavender too. So even though I started out with a less than ideal bowl and just, you know, out of the gates with it, I'm very happy with how it looks on the camera screen. How does it look at home? These always look a little different once I actually play it back. Hi, sweetheart. You ready for another rock? The Lambda Athena first juice, uh, perma sharp blade. That takes us down into the middle, and in the middle, you first run into uh, that saffron. That is luxurious, exotic, complex, sweet, and spicy. And right after that, you have the praline. The praline brings with it like a, a vanilla type sweetness, not vanilla. The only thing I can think of to describe it, that's a little tuggy. Um, that's better. Vanilla-like sweetness. A gourmand element. This is not at all a gourmand fragrance. Um, but the praline is bringing with it just this sophistication that you otherwise wouldn't have. Um, that is like decadent and comforting. This fragrance is perfect. The fragrance itself. I'll still, I'm still holding on to the one negative. The oud is luxurious, deep, woody, and earthy. The cedar is warm, a dry woody that is comforting. You get some like balsamic undertones that linger with that dry down that really start to, you know, once you get into the second hour of it, that you start to notice. <sighs> Splash over here, I have this 15 milliliter EDP. I'm hoping that Pete actually brings these to market and sells them at a reasonable price so that more guys can uh, try these EDPs and really, you know, experience the fragrance because I know a lot of us, we would like for the splash to behave like an EDP, but the fact of the matter is it's just really impossible to do that because the oil concentrations would have to be so high that you'd have people that end up with frag burn. But if you really want to experience these fragrances, of course, the best way to do that is with the EDP. Always going to be honest with you guys. The one place, and this is this like this one negative might be a positive for you. If you're a fan of like Molnair, but thought that it was too strong, this is kind of of the same vein. Um, but not nearly as strong. The scent strength, giving this a lot of thought. I'm trying to find where I want to set my razor. I think I'm just gonna put it, in my, oh, no, I don't wanna do that. I'm not prepared today because I forgot my bowls. The scent strength with the soap off the tub is only a two, a three at best. Once you lather it up, the scent strength of the soap is only about a three. I would say that the splash is also about a three and unfortunately the EDP when compared with other EDPs with five being average, not five being the highest, but with five being average, the soap is only a two to a three. The splash compared to other splashes and other scent strengths is only about a three again with five being average. And then the EDP with five being average, you know, when it comes to projection, scent strength, sillage, all the stuff that you might be looking for in EDP, this one is only about a two or three at best as well. The fragrance is absolutely beautiful. It is absolutely what I wanted and what I expected from this fragrance that I helped bring to market. You know, it's not collaboration. I don't want to use the word collaboration because it's not. Um, but the one place where I'm disappointed with the Caro is that it's not as strong as I had hoped. But that being said, because it is only about a three at its strongest, there is absolutely nowhere that you can, there is, you can wear this fragrance anywhere and everywhere. Um, and it's an absolute crowd pleaser, a 
fragrance that you will get compliments everywhere you go. So I think in a lot of ways, that's going to work to a lot of people's advantage. But I just want to be honest with you and let you know that that is the one place where I'm disappointed. And that if you do buy it, which I highly suggest that you do, um, unless you're looking for a projection beast. Because if you're looking for a projection beast, you're going to be dis disappointed with this one. But if you go into it knowing that it's an absolutely beautiful fragrance that I can't recommend enough. And knowing that the scent strength isn't the strongest, you're going to be super happy with it. And you can wear it anywhere, all day long. And you know, if you want it to be stronger, just apply a little bit more. Decant the splash, carry it with you by the EDP. Reapply it during the lunch hour or the middle of the day. And you'll have no problems. When I do these reviews, I'm always looking for the positive and the negative. And that is the one place where I'm just honestly disappointed uh, with the fragrance. Pete has a Black Friday sale. All the soaps and splashes are 15% off. I believe this is dropping, I want to say it's Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Today is Sunday. I wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving while I'm thinking about it. Happy holiday season. I seriously cannot recommend this fragrance enough. My wife loves it. And, you know, because it's not that strong, again, another one of the bonuses is, is that when people do like it, and, the, you know, the person that you want to get closer to you, they're going to have to get closer to you to smell it. And when it's a fragrance like this one that my wife genuinely, absolutely loves, it ends up actually being a winner. Athena. Luna, get Athena. Get her. Ready? You can go get it. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Come on. Sit with the splash real quick. Real quickly, uh, a Vaccaro, in case you don't know. I didn't really know much about them before doing this video. I did a bunch of research. Watched a couple of videos. I'll try to remember to put links to the two videos that I felt like I got the most out of in the description. Vaquero is a Spanish word for cowboy or herdsman. Not a calabrero, there's a difference. A vaquero. Or vaquero. I think when you anglicize it is what I learned. It's a V, but in like true Spanish, it's vaquero, like a B, not a V. B like boy. Like cowboy. And also, well, I won't go there. But if you really want to know more about the Vaquero, I highly recommend checking out the videos in the description. After learning what I learned, the label isn't an exact representation, like something that I learned that was super cool. In 1769, when the Spanish were building the missions what and, and what is now known as the missions trail going from San Diego all the way up to the San Francisco area they built 21 missions and when they were doing that is when the Caro first got its birth that was 1769 and in the early days uh the Vaquero and throughout the majority of the Vaquero um it was Spaniards, Anglo-Saxon Spaniards, uh, and Native Americans. And the Padres actually taught the natives how to ride because up until then, it was actually taboo against the norm uh, to or for natives to even learn how to ride. It's a little big things, my friends. I can't recommend this one enough. I really can't. It's absolutely amazing. So beautiful. So perfect. You can wear this anywhere. Date night, church on Sunday, work on Monday, out to the club, anywhere and everywhere. You can absolutely wear this fragrance. And because it's not a projection beast, 
uh, it's more of a subtle uh, scent strength. There's absolutely no limitation to where I would recommend wearing this fragrance. Uh, you're going to get compliments all day long when people smell it. I guarantee it. Athena, do you like it? One more rock. Stick around for the B-roll. Real quick too before I forget. Thursday, Thanksgiving, 5 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Pacific. Patrick Croman is joining me for a live here on YouTube. And then Saturday, the day after Black Friday, Douglas Smythe and uh, probably, maybe I'm hoping, Huxley uh, will be joining us for a live as well um, in my uh, community spotlight. You guys take care. I'll see you next time. Welcome to the B-roll. How did the shave go? There's Luna in brown and Athena in mostly black. So this is the direction you guys have been looking throughout the shave. Pan first to the left. A little while ago, maybe we'll get it again during the shave. I recorded the B-roll before the shave. Somewhere out in there, a dead tree fell. And it sounded really cool and I caught a glimpse of it. Over here to the left is my beautiful bride and our wonderful, beautiful daughter. My setup, I'll show you a little bit more of it in just a second. Right over here, we've been doing some target practicing. You see my target up against the bank there. The girls are waiting for another rock. I want to once again thank Pete for sending this out to me. I have a ton of fun doing these fragrances with him, and it's an honor doing it. It really is. So I got my main stool right here. That stool there just holding stuff. I use the pill bottles, the 60 dram bottles as travel bottles for my brushes. An assortment of rocks that I'll be throwing during the shave with for Luna. Athena will be chasing Luna. My tripod. It's a little big things, my friends. And for me, no matter what time of year it is, for the most part, no matter the weather, a little big thing for me is just getting out into the forest, shooting, shooting guns, building a fire, and just spending quality time with my beautiful bride who had bad timing when I was about to pan over to her. <laughs> you guys take care. I'll see you next time.